Welcome back into the Playmakers. It's time for our favorite sportscasters segment. We're going to impersonate Let's get it ready. them. Let's get it ready. And then we're going to compare to what they actually say. So I'm going to start out with Stuart Scott, rest in peace. At the heart of the game, it's always been the same. It's put the ball in the hoop from underhand set shot jumper, what have you. Ball swish in the nets, count for two, unless you got range. Feeling free, let it fly, and it's three. Right now in the NBA, nobody makes buckets from long distance like the warrior Steph Curry. At the heart of the game, always been the same as putting the ball in the hoop. From underhand set shot jumper, what have you, ball swish in the nets counts for two. Unless you got range, feeling free, let it fly, and it's three. And right now in the NBA, nobody makes buckets from long distance like the warrior Steph Curry. Hand in his face, double teamed, no worry. His... And it hit him, wouldn't you know? Now he has something to say, and look out here. AJ Ellis got out there just as Grenke and Quentin got together. Quentin continues to amaze as he consistently gets hit by pitches. And it hit him, wouldn't you know? Now he has something to say, and look out here. A.J. Ellis got out there just as Branky and Quentin got together. Quentin continues to amaze as he consistently gets hit by pitches. That was, of course, the ageless Vin Scully for the Dodgers. And next, I'm going to do one that you probably haven't heard of, but he's my all-time favorite. Here we go. Sean Marshall against Little Pony, Carlos Gonzalez. High drive, deep right, touch them all, he's done it. Unbelievable, sixth career cycle in Rockies history. It took only one pitch. Here we go, Sean Marshall uh, against Little Pony, Carlos Gonzalez. High drive, deep right, touch them all, he's done it. <laughs> Are you kidding me, come on. Now it's time for some of my favorite broadcasters. I'm going to start with the guy who's my favorite, the White Sox announcer, Hawk Harrelson. Call your wives, call your husbands, call your sons, call your daughters. You have a perfect game going into the ninth inning. That ball hit deep, goes back into left center field. Dwayne Wise goes back. He makes the catch. He makes the catch. Dwayne Wise makes the catch. What a play. Mercy. Call your sons, call your daughters, call your friends, call your neighbors. Mark Burley has a perfect game going to the ninth. That ball hit deep in the left center field. Wise back, back. Makes the catch! What a play! Dwayne Wise makes the catch! What a play by Wise! Mercy! Next is Pat Foley, the famous Blackhawks announcer. Blackhawks to the other end. Shoots one. Crawford brushes it off. It's clear to the center for Taze. Taze for the win. Hawks win. Hawks win. Jonathan Taze takes it to the net with the backhander for the Blackhawks win. They take it to close it at home to the series back on Sunday in the UC. Back is to the other end. Shoots one. Crawford fought it off. Rebound. It's cleared to center for Taze. He got a breakaway. Next is the amazing sideline Iceman for the NBC Sports Network hockey coverage, Pierre Maguire. How Gill, a good defensive with a long stick. Is that the guy that they traded, though? You're an announcer with a long stick from time to time. I guess I just have a big mouth. That means I have a long stick. I actually think he could be packing his bags for Toronto, though, but his asking price is very high. Hal Gill. Um, but he had mentioned Hal Gill's a defenseman with a long stick. Uh, is this a guy that's going to be traded, though? You're an announcer with a long stick from time to time. Yeah, big mouth, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know about Hal Gill? No, I think Hal Gill will eventually be uh, moved out of Toronto as well. But the asking price for Hal Gill is probably a little bit higher than people think because he's got... 
I was going to do some of mine, but every one of the uh, videos I Googled just went to a top 10 hot female reporting list. So, <laughs> sorry guys, <laughs> but I wish that everyone could have just experienced that in-house like I just did. Never going to forget that. Well, so, what are you guys watching for in KU sports this week? KU has the Women's Swimming Big 12 Championship. Shout out to Nadia. She's on her staff. Shout out to Nadia. Exactly. She, they're, they're going for the Big 12 Championship, and I am really excited to see if KU will be able to win the thing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, let's, let's stick with the championships uh, here. The indoor track and field championships is this weekend in Ames, Iowa. And K, uh, K's already been there twice this season. So they've, they know the track. They've seen it. And there's been a lot of records broken every week. So I think we could see their first indoor championship in a long while. <laughs> okay. And so what are you watching for this week that's not KU? I spent my Friday nights watching Curling Out in America. <laughs> Greatest thing you can watch on television. NBC Sports Network. Jamie Sinclair single-handedly takes down the Chinese curling team. <laughs> she was going into the last end, which they call it in curling. It's kind of like an ending in baseball. And she takes it, puts the stone right in the center, right where you need to put it. And then on the next one, knocks out all the Chinese, all oh. the Chinese curling. No! It's just, a, it's, it's a great sport. Curling night! Every time you watch America. Winter Olympics, every time you watch Winter Olympics, it's always on no matter what time of day. <laughs> it's the greatest thing. Also, I have to give a shout out to Jamie Sinclair because she has the strongest Twitter game I've ever seen. If you tweet at her within a minute, she's already favoriting that. Or if she likes it enough, she'll retweet you. But I haven't had that benefit yet. I think you have a crush, Nick. I, I do. I, I have to admit it, I do. It's his first crush. <laughs> I, uh, I'm just excited for free agency in the NFL, but you know, that's just me. That doesn't start till March. Though. I know, but it's almost March. What about the March? franchise tags? That, that's coming up. Yeah, true. True. I'm thinking the Chiefs are going with Eric Berry on that franchise tag. Who are what you thinking with your uh, ponies? <laughs> My ponies? <laughs> the Super Bowl champions. Super Bowl champions. <laughs> Not ponies. Uh, I think they're going to franchise Von Miller and then sign him to a long-term deal. That should be priority number one. That'd be a, that, that's a good move. But let me ask you this really question. Do you, what do you see in Shane Ray? Do you think that someday he could stand alongside Von Miller in the place of DeMarcus Ware? Oh, because absolutely. he's getting up there in age. He's, what, yeah. 34 now? Yeah, he, I mean, that's why John Elway drafted him. Uh, and then him and Shaq Barrett, who is also a free agent uh, right. coming up, right. uh, they're, they're going to. But that's all the time we have for the show. Join us next time when we talk about KU Sports with you again. Have a great night. Yeah.